Hi, I'm Kay Estefano. I do crochet tutorials, mostly tops like this one. And if you're interested, hit that like and subscribe button for more. So for this tutorial, we will need any fingering weight yarn, a 3mm hook, pair of scissors, tapestry needle, and stitch markers. By the way, this acrylic yarn that is soft like cotton is from Yarn Temptations. They also have this paper at the end of the strand to easily pull the yarn from the center. So grab your yarn and make a slip knot. You can use any method whichever you're comfortable with. Then chain 2 and make 2 single crochets on the first chain. That will be our first row. By the way, we are starting from the upper part of the top, so this is where we will add our strap later on. For row 2, chain 1, turn your work. That chain 1 does not count as a single crochet. And on that same stitch, work with 2 single crochet. Then 3 single crochet on the next. For row 3, chain 1, turn your work that does not count as a stitch, then 2 single crochet on the same stitch. Then single crochet next stitch across, and then 3 single crochet on the very last stitch. And that will be our third row, and to make sure you're doing it right, you should have a total of 8 single crochets. For row 4, chain 1, turn your work that does not count as a stitch, 2 single crochets on the same stitch, single crochet on the next stitch across, and 3 single crochet on the very last stitch. You should have a total of 11 single crochet. For row 5, chain 1, again that does not count as a stitch, work with 2 single crochet on the same stitch, single crochet next stitches across, and 3 single crochet on the very last stitch. So basically, in every row you add, you will start with a chain that does not count as a stitch, turn your work, make 2 single crochet on the same stitch, single crochet the next stitch across, and 3 single crochet in every last stitch of the row. So, your total count of stitches, to make sure that you are doing it right, you will just add 3 in your total count. So, for row 5, you will have a total of 14. For row 6, with total of 17. For row 7, with total of 21, and so on and so forth. Your total rows will depend on your size. This is the first one that I made. This is the strap. This will be just above the nips when worn. And we will just have a little bit change on the pattern when this part of your project which is just an inch away from the center of your chest. So to achieve that slight curve, our pattern now will be chain 1 that does not count as a stitch, 1 single crochet on the same stitch, single crochet all the stitches across, and 3 single crochet on the very last stitch. So now I'm here at that last, last stitch and doing the 3 single crochet.
For the next row, chain 1 that doesn't count as a stitch, turn your work, work with 2 single crochet on that same stitch, single crochet next stitches across, and into the last stitch, make only 2 single crochet. So I'm on that last stitch and working with the two single crochet. Next row, chain 1 that does not count as a stitch, turn your work, single crochet on that same stitch, single crochet next stitches across and again 3 single crochet on the very last stitch. So as you can see, we are already starting to see that slight curve here and still making a straight line on the other side. So here's our last, our three single crochets on our last stitch. After that, we will just repeat the same pattern on our last two rows for three more times until you reach on this line. Then it should look like this and before you cut your yarn, you should end up on this part. So here, I've already made half of the other cup. Your total rows should have the same total rows with the other cup before you started the pattern for the curve. So now, determine the right side. Right side means the outside of the top one worn. After you determine the right side, if this cup has its curve on this side, the other cup should have its curve on this side. So to create that curve, we will just do the same two row repeat pattern that we did on the other cup. That means every time you start your row here, we will just chain one Turn your work and one single crochet in the same stitch and single crochet in next stitches across. Well, if you end here, you will just work with a two single crochet on the very last stitch. Repeat that pattern with the same count of rows with the other cup. If you got confused, let's say these cups are both facing the right side and the other one has its curve on the left side. The other one will have its curve on the right side. Just like that, there, both their curves will meet here at the center. After you finish your two cups, the other one should end up in here. That's important because it will create a seam if you don't end up in here. Then we will add more rows attaching both the cups. To add more rows, you will still start with a chain 1 that does not count as a stitch. Turn your work and make 2 single crochet on that same stitch and single crochet next stitches across.
to join these two cups after your last single crochet chain one and continue making single crochets to the other cup Still, we will end the row with 3 single crochets on that very last stitch and start every row with chain 1 that does not count as a stitch and 2 single crochets on the same stitch. After a few more rows with increases, you should have a slant line on both these sides. Of course, I'll still show you what to do on this part. After your single crochet on your last stitch, single crochet on the chain 1, and continue single crochet next stitches across. After a few rows, it should look like this. Try to wrap this in your body and if these two edges are just 3 inch away with each other on your back, stop increasing the stitches and start adding rows without increases. Make sure to have the same count of stitches every row until you reach your desired length of your top. So to work with rows without increase, chain 1 that does not count as a stitch, turn your work and single crochet next to stitches across. Repeat adding rows with the same pattern until you reach your desired length and here's my last single crochet and start starting with the next row. So as you can see, we are now creating a straight line, that's because we are not increasing the count of stitches anymore. So after you've done that, we will now make spaces for the lace, the crisscross lace for to be exact, and we will use a mesh stitch for that. So to create a mess stitch, chain 5, skip 2 rows and single crochet on the next. Again, chain 5, skip 2 rows and single crochet on the next. Keep repeating that stitch until you reach the slant side. Once you reach the slant side, it should look like this. And on that slant side, you will just work with a single crochet each row using single crochet as edging makes the project look neat so after you reach this part we will now make the strap and to make a strap, work a chain long enough at least 23 inch or 25 inch regardless of the count of the chains. So once you've done that, we will just slip stitch each chain all the way back. 
You may also use a single crochet if you want a thicker strap. Once you're back, you will just continue working with single crochets until you get to the other cup and do the same pattern for the strap. On this part, of course, you will use the same stitch you use on the other side and also make sure you will have the same count of stitch. Once you've done that, find your center stitch at the bottom of your top, put a stitch marker on it, also in every tenth stitch both sideways. So now we will work with our shell stitches. Work your shell stitches in every stitch marker but mine is too close for our first stitch so I'll just make a chain that is long enough to reach the next stitch marker. For your size, if your stitch marker is just, is just 5 chains, 5 stitches away, you can start your first shell stitch on your first stitch marker. So here's my first marker and to make a shell stitch you will just work with a 2 double crochet chain 1, 2 double crochet same stitch. To reach the next stitch marker, chain 5 and do your next shell stitch. Again, chain 5 and shell stitch on the next stitch marker. Repeat that pattern in every stitch marker. So now I'm on my last marker but since I did a 9 chain on my first stitch marker, I will also do a 9 chains here and slip stitch on the very last stitch. So if you started with 3 chains before your first shell stitch, you will end up your 
first row with also three chains after your last shell stitch so after you've slip stitched your first row onto the last stitch make a chain that is long enough to reach for our second row so mine is nine so i will also make nine for the second row so for this row our shell pattern will be three double crochet chain one three double crochet same space then chain three and again shell stitch with three double crochet chain one three double crochet on the space on the shell from the previous row Again, chain 3 and make another shell stitch with 3 double crochet, chain 1, 3 double crochet on the space for on the next shell. Repeat that pattern across. So depending on how many chains you started the second row, you will also have the same count of chains to end the row and slip stitch on the last stitch. For our last row, again, work a chain long enough to reach for the shell stitch for our last row. My, I made mine 9. And then for our shell stitch, make 4 double crochet pico stitch and another 4 double crochet same space. To make a pico stitch, chain 3 and slip stitch on the first chain. So my purpose of adding a pico stitch on our shell stitch is to create a space for these flat beads like the other one that I made. So then chain one and repeat that same pa shell pattern stitch on the next space. Repeat the same pattern across. So to end our last row, Make a chain, same count with the chain you started the row, and then slip stitch on the last stitch. As usual for our back lace, I always double pull my yarn and work a very long chain. And just like that, we've again finished another top. I hope to see your actual works using this tutorial. 
If you plan to upload them on your social media accounts, you can tag me using my links on the description box below. Follow me there. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.